My name is Nemanja, people call me Neo. I'm working for SciTech for some time, but not too long. Uh, I'm one of the chapter leads. So basically we have this Spotify model and we place people into um, chapters. So they can share their, um, let's say, interest and knowledge. So you don't feel too far in the company from, uh, from your peers. Um, I have been in IT for approximately 10 years now. Changed many companies and industries, fintech, um, retail and finance, and so on. Um, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, so I also teach courses. Uh, we are about to launch the uh, labs.devjam, uh, which is going to be another company within SciTech. We are going to provide trainings to people. So, for example, yourself, your ambassador for Kubernetes, we would welcome you to maybe work for us. <laughs> um, well, besides uh, MCT, I'm uh, probably going to become uh, Microsoft MVP this year. I'm holding uh, fingers for myself. And next to that, I have 25 more certifications and awards. I have been spending a lot of time uh, studying, let's say. So, I, when I came to SciTech, I came as a DevOps consultant. I'm still doing that. But then uh, very fast, I became the chapter lead. And this is not my first role that I'm leading a group of people. Per se. So today I want to talk about, let's say, 360 life of one leader and how it looks to engage with people. What should, you should possess uh, your personality next to the technical skills. Because technical skills, people reach for that, but uh, they also seek, let's say, safe house, someone who's going to listen to them, understand them, um, give advice, and so on. So, let's start. Um, in the nutshell, leadership can be described as, uh, let's say, one big box of skills. Where you, let's say, put all your cubes that you learned in your life. And then, basically, your personality is adjusted to that. Um, by saying that, I mean to have like technical skills, soft skills, and to be very educated, as uh, Mikael mentioned before. So I'm going to describe later some uh, different parts that people are, let's say, seeking in the leaders. Um, and at the end, I will give you a list of resources, maybe, that can uh, contribute to your education, I hope. Um, so in every company, is it small or, or large, there are group of diverse community. We have a lot of nations inside. Different nations have different habits. Different nations have different types of communication, expressions, expectations, and also fears. You know, they are uh, not so comfortable with some things, and they are very comfortable with other things. So, for one leader, it's not so easy job. You know, you need to understand all those people and oversee them. For example, in my squad, I have. Uh, almost 10 consultants that are doing DevOps and most of them are just from different countries. So you need to align with every single person to understand uh, what is his roadmap in the, let's say, career, but also in his life because we are not here just to talk business. I want to have friends, right? <laughs> so that's a, that's a big thing. So basically in a nutshell, in uh, SciTech, when someone gets into one of the squads, uh, the chapter lead is in charge of defining, let's say, the technical goals, but also growing yourself as a person, right? So you want to be a, let's say, safe house for that person. Uh, he wants to come to you and talk about whatever, not just business, as I mentioned. And it's up to you to really dive into his life, uh, not only, you know, technical skills, it's very important to understand what he's talking, not only to listen, but to hear, to grasp the things, you know. So, friendly approach is very important, and um, something that you heard about, it's coaching. What is the coaching? Coaching is actually making yourself horizontal. You learned a lot of things during your life, and uh, they said that a good quality of one leader is not leading people, but per se making more people being leaders. You know, 
And that makes your leader, making yourself horizontal, sharing your skills, but also offloading your work. Because first of all, you don't want to do things yourself as you're growing. Um, you want other people to be able to, to learn things and also you should give them opportunity to become a leader because that makes you a bigger leader if you have successful stories behind you, right? It's a very important concept. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. You should be able to glue people together, uh, understand them, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And um, it's very important to have a clear vision of your company and your squad that you're leading. Um, clear vision, when it comes to that, it's difficult to get it because, as Mikhail said, there is always a communicational aspect. The issue that some information is not flowing through all possible channels and you might lose a track of what's happening in the company. And you, as one of the technical leaders, you want to know mostly everything, right? To be able to propose new business concepts, to know what your team is thinking about the company, uh, to help them grow and so on. So you need to be kind of omnipresent, let's say. It's a very fancy word, like to be the present in the company, within the team, to understand things, to be in the channel. Um, it's a bit challenging, but it gets as a, let's say, bundle of skills after some time. <laughs> What I find really difficult is to focus. When there are so many people asking you for technical advice, hey bro, my, uh, my wife is about to give up birth, then you need to think about sending the gift perhaps from the company, or someone is ill, you know, then you need to be compassionate with the person to really say, no, it's not gonna be okay. If he says he's really sick, then it's like, yeah, bro, shit, what we're gonna do about it, you know? Not just to encourage people, but to feel their pain when, uh, when it's about that. Um, so you need to scope also your interests. Um, you do not want to get overwhelmed because communication is coming from all the sides and people are flooding you with the information. Um, your interests need to be concise as well. Not only technical ones. But what you do in the company, you cannot be everywhere, even though you're the central point of action. And that's a very important thing. So there are some tools that you can see, like Twitter, Feedly. It's a really good one. I like it. You can subscribe to different channels that uh, bring talks on about technology, maybe or some other interests. And there are some other RSS feeds. To train your focus, I'm going to share some books later. And it's a never-ending journey, I would say. It starts every single moment. For example, I'm talking now and I find myself saying, uh, and then you get back, right? That's your focus. Ground yourself, feel your feet. You're talking in front of the people. It's okay to feel like you feel. Sometimes we also feel anxious, especially when working with people. And the, I would say the worst thing is to reject yourself, how you feel. Sometimes I say to myself, oh, I don't want to feel like this, but that's even suppressing more my feeling and then I'm feeling even more anxious, you know. Just say, okay, it's fine, but that's not going to beat me now. Let's just continue. And that's it. And do not get overwhelmed. That's a very important aspect. I do not have a good advice how to do that because I'm overwhelmed every day. It's about you to find out. <laughs> You need to invest in your skills. So this is a topic that I'm not going to spend too much time uh, talking about because most of you know how to find and seek help. You can find technical uh, skill training on plenty of sources online. You, have, you all have your own interests, so you know your channels. There are leadership trainings that are very good and I'm going to share uh, at the end the, some companies that can help you. They are working with us, for example, inside the site tech. They deliver on-site training. I really like it. You come, you concentrate for a few hours, you hear new things. Very interesting concept. And there is a lot of communication um, training inside. You talk to the people in person, you say things that you are not so comfortable with, you get feedback directly also. 
So another very important skill, as Michael mentioned in the communication, is empathy. So you have a bunch of people around you, they, you want to make sure they understand you. So empathy is one of also most essential skills in your life and it's a ability to understand people, to hear what they are saying. Not only to pretend, but really to grasp it in yourself. When someone is laughing, you should laugh. When someone is crying, maybe you shouldn't cry, but not laugh in his face. And it's okay to also be honest with the people. For example, now I'm suffering from some bacteria, it's interfering with my breathing. And it's okay to say that maybe you have a problem in front of the people that doesn't make you weak. You're coming all from some countries where parents taught you, hey, you're a fucking man, you should not express any tears or be strong all the time. That makes you weak, actually. If you look at the long term, when you're suppressing yourself, when you're making something of yourself that you're not, but someone taught you. So think about what you're thinking about. That's a good thing. And awareness. Stop yourself for a second. As I said, think about what you're thinking. Maybe shift your attention to something else. I, I catch myself thinking about bullshit all the time. Next to everything important that I need to think about. I come here and, yeah, maybe my girlfriend is far away, so I'm in love. Or there is some problem within the family. And you need to be in the present moment. So awareness of who you are, where you are, it's very important. And it's something that's also a never-ending journey. It's all the time improving and it comes gradually as well. There is no one-day battle that's going to be won. Same with the Rome. <laughs> Habits. To be a leader, people are asking you to shine all the time. And to shine all the time, you need to have a good life, man. Otherwise, when you come crashed at work and everyone is reaching to you, it's not really easy. So, some of the recommendations. Sleep well. You can uh, buy Valerian. It's a tea. It really calms you down and gives a good sleep. You want to have a clean environment around you. No one likes garbage. You want to maybe smell something good. That we have a lavender here, everyone will be already like, uh, very good, relaxed, you know. Something to buy, man. <laughs> Practice mindfulness. A lot of people are like, bam, just rejecting this thing, but we are overwhelmed in our minds all the time, right? Thinking about technology, your private life. You never have a moment to like, just pause everything, you know. Think about yourself what you want in life. Do you want just to work and be the leader or maybe you want to move to Thailand and they pray with the monks? You know? <laughs> Ask yourself questions and surround with the good people. Good people bring good energy and how you feel is how you, people see you actually. If you have good vibrations, then you have empathy from the people. If you feel shit, everyone are gonna feel shit next to you. But as a leader, it's a very important concept, right? Shine. And adjust stimulation level. Sometimes I go into my talks so intensively and then I find myself digging the rabbit hole with the person. Then I just come back talking about awareness again. <laughs> Be transparent as well. If you do not feel well, if you have some issue, tell them, I cannot help you today, I'm sorry. It is like that. It's better for me to tell you transparently the things than to try to be in the situation, maybe fail, give wrong advice. So be compassionate, be yourself, do not try to fool people, some good advices. And then overall personality. So I said, we need to accept how we feel, especially when we are under the pressure. People reject a lot of things and there is a psychological term called suppression. When you suppress how you feel, you accumulate stuff. So maybe, let's say, I'm going to speak about some deeper thing now, but let's imagine you have a trauma. Trauma is just accumulated emotion inside you. So every day, if you are in pressure at your work, 
and that's accumulating, you need to speak about it. Speak with your manager, speak with your boss, whatever. Um, it's okay to feel like that because you are feeling. Someone says, hey, I'm a happy person, I'm smiling, and then I go home crying. Am I a happy person? No, I'm everything, you know. You have all those feelings inside you and it's okay to feel like that. You need to build your own routine. So there is a lot of disconnection from the world, especially when you're talking all around 360. There is a lot of interference, especially now in 21st century, you have plenty of these social networks, your phone is ringing all the time, someone is asking you, you're thinking about something else. It's hard, so we need to be concentrated. <laughs> so what I do in the morning, I have very simple alarm clock next to my bed and I leave my phone in the living room. So I wake up, I do not have a chance to check my messages right away. I do my thing, one hour, boot up, breakfast, go for a walk, maybe take my phone, maybe not. But it's very important to, next to all the people that you're compassionate with as a leader, you need to spend time being yourself, building your own routine. Otherwise, once you start falling down because of yourself, you cannot be the leader anymore. And that's very normal. <laughs> Stay in the center. This has to do with mindfulness as I talked before. And it's, yeah, one of the skills that uh, combines awareness, your focus, and many other things. I cannot tell you too much about it because I shift from my own center many times. I'm trying to be better every day, so at least 1%, that's enough. If we are better for 1% every day, then on the yearly basis, we can count how many percents that is. I'm going to share one good book. Listening to others, as I mentioned, it's, it has to do with the empathy. So, not going to repeat myself, you have already enough information. Because with my talks, I don't like to prepare too much, that makes me anxious. Then I just talk about the slides and maybe something comes out before something comes out later. That's completely fine. And you want to know more, always, but be also balanced, do not overwhelm yourself, as I mentioned. It's a very dangerous thing. In the business, it's big, it's good to be thirsty for more, because you can bring a lot of value. You don't want to be that developer sitting in the corner, just coding. Let your mind do the thing, man. Maybe you have some good ideas, bring to the management, bring to the board. Bring some other kind of revenue in the company. Bring another stream. Use your other skills. Do not identify yourself just with who you are now. Maybe you can be something else tomorrow. Right? It's a very important concept. For example, now in SciTech, it, we have that opportunity to build a greater company because we are not too big. And we do not plan to grow substantially without losing control. With losing control, sorry. <laughs> So, there are other kind of initiatives, and we publish in initiatives uh, for growing the company, let's say, centrally, and everyone can see that. Building the training center, building the podcast, building these kind of communities, reselling the software. You can think about many business models that you can leverage to make money, right? It's not only being a developer. And if you're good at other things, make sure to speak. Mikhail mentioned that. So you can be the best person in the world, you have the all knowledge, but if you're in a dark corner doing your thing and not showing that up, you're fucked, man. You're not going to sell that, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Someone needs to know what you know in order for you to leverage yourself. It's, it's very normal. No one knows you if no one hears you. <laughs> exactly. So there are some resources uh, that I want to share with you as a finisher. There is a top leadership program. I believe uh, that's a company from, let's say, Nordics. I'm not sure if it's Norway or Sweden. I attended their course. It's very good. They have a few levels and they challenge you a lot. You get in a group with a lot of people and then you have imaginary situations. And you are about to give feedback to the people, to receive the feedback and get you out of your comfort zone. That's a very important thing. Experience something else as a leader. 
might for more. We are collaborating closely with this company. It's a Dutch company. It's held with, uh, by one really experienced guy. Lately, he was delivering some talks here in person in our dev center, and I was amazed. Guy knows the thing. He's talking about the parrot on your shoulder. That's like giving you all kind of advices, good and bad, while you're talking to the people. Talking about awareness, so all these kind of things that I mentioned, he knows how to break them down. I'm currently going through the course, so if we have a meet up in six months, I will be able to share more. <laughs> and there are some books um, under Mind for More, How to Stay Focused by Stephen, whatever. There, there is uh, emotional intelligence, how to leverage your emotions to be compassionate, understand people better, control yourself, and so on. Then there is a secret. It's about good affirmations. What you think is what your world is becoming. If you're thinking today about moving to Asia and you're connecting with that thought, let's say, in, a, in the future, at the end you'll be there. I was thinking when I was younger to be someone, maybe there is not completely clear picture, but how you prepare, you boost on that thought and it becomes more clear and clear. And then it drags you to do some work, to go there and actually achieve that. And actually, I'm here today speaking in front of you guys. A few years ago, I didn't know anything. So it's about only everything starts with the thought, right? And then if there is ambition, you can grab on it, do something about it. Atomic Habits, very good one. How to stack your routine, make sure your life becomes profound. You do not feel like shit, you feel like a superman after, after reading the book and a lot of good advice is inside. Then Marcus Aurelius Meditations, this is the guy you know all about him. And in this book he is telling himself every day what he's feeling, he's building his awareness, um, he's commenting on his thoughts. So do you want to surrender to your negativity or you want to be the positive person? The thing is that we cannot always control our subconsciousness. We are kind of, let's say, facing our emotions and also what we think about. So do you identify yourself with what you think? or actually what is your end result as the action. You know? So it's very important to have this concept in mind and this book is very good because this guy went inside his mind, subconsciousness, and explored it like a sea. Trying to understand if he's gonna connect with his every thought or just the leverage the positive ones because there is a lot of bullshit in all of us and we need to admit that. It's normal, God made us like that. The Kibalion, this is a rare one, I discovered maybe a year ago. It explains the uh, essential life concepts about, for example, polarity. What is the polarity? It's extremes of the same thing. So you have a water, for example. It becomes extremely hot or extremely cold. And how do you know what is the difference when it's probably in between? So I found a lot of, let's say, life wisdom that helps you to neutralize something when, for example, I'm feeling bad and I'm about to give a talk, you know. I just say, okay, I feel bad, I accept that, and then just move to the neutral phase, maybe in the next minute I'm going to be laughing, and that's fine. So, there are some interesting things inside, also a bit spiritual for the people that, that like that, I'm into it. And the last one, really good one, letting go, the pathway to surrender, it's all about your inner self. And it's very important for technical leaders who want to understand themselves better, especially when dealing with, let's say, diverse community. Um, you don't want to identify yourself by what you're thinking, you know. So once you have a bad thought, even about something that you should be compassionate with, you shouldn't judge yourself. Fuck, I'm thinking this. It's okay, it came out, you don't want to acknowledge that as something that you are, you just let it go. So, this guy spent his life understanding the human nature, behavior and, let's say, psychic 
and he wrote 11 uh, books then before this one this was the final one and I find it very interesting it's not too long it can help you so that's my talk thank you <laughs>